Now let's dig into more vocabulary. You're going to communicate with the access point. And typically, you want to identify what communication is possible with the access point, and that's done by defining networks. These networks have names, like this one here. That is useful because if you have a corporate employee, they will be allowed to talk to the access point with a certain type of security, and with a certain type of priority, and with a certain type of network access. And that's going to define a different network from what guests can have, for example, in the same area. So defining networks over the air is very critical. And those networks are going to be associated with names. And those names are going to be called the Service Set Identifier, or SSID. The SSID is the name of the network. And along with the SSID, along with this name, you will have all sorts of characteristics to that network, such as security, again, QoS, isolation, etc. This is why most of the time this network is called a WLAN, a wireless LAN that contains, among other things, an SSID, which is a string, a name, that identifies that network. But of course, if you are moving on the floor, we'll be moving from one access point to the other. And of course, those access points are going to serve the same SSID, and that's how you can move. But how do you distinguish one access point from the other for the same SSID? Well, each access point is going to identify itself not only with the network name, but there is more to that the access point is also going to identify itself by its MAC address. That's how your laptop will know that for the same SSID, there are two access points that can serve that SSID. And that's because the access points are going to each return its own MAC address along with the SSID name. The MAC address associated to the SSID name is called the BSSID. So careful, the SSID alone, that's the name. The basic service set identifier, or BSSID, is the MAC address associated to the SSID. So if you remember that the access point has a BSA and that serves a BSS, that is a way for you to remember that the B thing is associated to every single access point. So SSID is common to everyone, but BSSID identifies a unique access point for that SSID. OK, so here you are between these two access points. If you want to look for that SSID name, ScaryCat, and you have these two access points returning that MAC address, then of course you have this uh, vocabulary that tells you that the SSID is the string and that the MAC address is what is the BSSID. But if you have the guest and the corporate, or if you have two different SSIDs on one access point, how do you do it? Well, the way you do it is that, of course, the string is going to be different because you have two different SSID names, and that's easy for us. But what about the MAC address? Well, you probably read that each device can only have one single MAC address, and MAC addresses have to be unique, and that's very true. So what vendors do, access point vendors, is that they burn into their access points more than one MAC address if they want that access point to support more than one SSID. The result is that, for example, Cisco, they have access points that have 8 or even 16 MAC addresses burnt in inside. And if you want to support more than one SSID on that Cisco access point, you're just going to use one MAC address for each of the SSIDs. And that's why you see my two SSIDs here on the left have two different MAC addresses. They look alike at the beginning, right, because they're all from the same vendor and they're all from the same series, but just the end is different because there are different individual MAC addresses. That allows your laptop to know that there are two SSIDs and also allows it to know that there are two different services here, two BSSIDs, because there are two MAC addresses, although it's the same single access point. When you have more than one SSID and one more than one BSSID per access point, you support what we call MBSSID, or Multiple Basic Service Set Identifier. And that's not all vendors, right? Some vendors only support one single SSID, and that's because they have only one MAC address on that access point, so it cannot do more than one. Enterprise class access points typically support more than one, so they have more than one MAC address burned in inside the access point, so you can do more than one SSID on those. And of course, the max number of SSIDs you can support on that access point is going to be directly dependent on how many MAC addresses the vendor burns into the access point when they made it. OK, so you have two access points serving the same SSID. But if you have a laptop or any device that's mobile, you will need to move around the floor, and that will mean that you will be moving from one access point to the other. And that means that there needs to be communication from those access points to the network. 
and probably they will need to communicate with each other. The action of moving from one access point to the other without interruption, that is to say you do not drop your communication, is called roaming. Roaming has to be seamless, which means that you have to make sure in the background that the infrastructure is set so that you do not interrupt the flow of traffic to and from that laptop. That means that these devices, the access points, have to communicate with each other and with the infrastructure. When two access points communicate with each other over the cable, over the wired infrastructure, you define what we call an extended service set, where the service set spans beyond one single access point, but can actually span across two or more access points serving the same infrastructure network, the same wired infrastructure network in the background. Each access point still communicates with the DS, and it's the communication across DSs that does the ESS. All right, now, if you are in the middle between these two access points, and if these two access points are on the same channel, well, there is going to be a problem. You are going to have a problem because you are going to hear messages from these access points on that same channel right in the middle. And that, of course, is going to make you very unclear in what each access point sent. For that reason, we say that every single time you have two access points next to each other, serving the same SSID, they should never be on the same channel. So if you have one access point on the left on channel number one, the access point on the right, if there is an overlap between those two, has to be on another channel, six, for example, or 11. And that's because you will have stations in the middle that will be able to hear on channel number one the first access point and will need to have clarity into what the other access point may be saying. And as you move and you go there, you will be getting to a point where you'll think that you cannot hear the first AP on channel 1 anymore well enough that you want to maintain a communication. And what your laptop is going to do in that time is to change channels and try to listen to the other frequencies to see if there is not, by any chance, another access point that would be serving the same SSID. And by doing so, you'll be listening to channel number 6, you'll be listening and hearing the same SSID but a different MAC address, which tells you that there is a point to which you can go, another access point serving the same SSID there. Typically, however, you're not going to listen. You're actually going to actively send query messages on all the channels. As soon as you decide that channel one is not good enough for you anymore, you're going to go to every other channel, probably two, three, four, five, etc., and send discovery messages to say, is anybody doing my SSID on this channel? And wait for a response, and if you find one, go to that access point. We'll come back on those messages in the upcoming lessons. We'll look at those exchanges between the access point and the station.